Here's another way of putting this, folks. For 10 years, Iran can build up its enriched uranium supply to the brink of it being almost usable for nuclear weapons. It currently has enough enriched uranium for seven bombs. And then after 10 years, who knows how many bombs they'll be able to make. The Iranians' currently enriched uranium only needs to be boosted from 20% to 80% to be used as nuclear material. And they now have new centrifuges, which can do that very quickly because the sanctions have been lifted and they can get even more centrifuges. They're not going to have to get rid of the centrifuges that they got, the new ones. They get to keep them. In fact, they're claiming they're going to be allowed to start using them under this deal. Now, here's Marie Harf. This was at the State Department yesterday. And a AP reporter, Matt Lee, said, I'd like to go to Iran and the president's rather unusual sales job in this most recent interview, which he said after 13 years that Iran would have the capability or could have to produce a nuclear weapon. I think his words were a little mixed up there, but what he was referring to is a scenario in which they there was no deal. And if you go back and look at the transcript, I know it's a little confusing. I spoke to the folks at the White House and read it a few times. It's my understanding that he was referring to, even though it was a little muddled in the words, to a scenario in which there was no deal. Now, how does that make Obama look? It means means this woman had to get together with people at the White House and ask them, what did he just say? Oh, my God, did he just tell the truth about, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And they sent Harf out there. Uh, it was a damage control. Movie. Well, he was a little mixed up in his words out there. He was a little mixed up in his words out there. You know, he was, he, I talked to my people in the White House, and he was, he was thinking, when well, there's no deal. Everybody knew that. Look at the contact. Look, folks, the bottom line is this. With the billions of dollars that are coming in from the end of sanctions on Iran, they're going to be able to build a lot of new centrifuges or import them. And that's going to speed up the enrichment to nuclear-grade uranium pretty damn quick. Now, we had a caller yesterday who suggested that a lot of people are missing the point that they're not just trying to build a bomb. They have seven now. They're on their way to having seven. But that's not what they're doing. They're choosing to put off building individual bombs so that they can develop a nuclear arsenal, an entire nuclear program. Right now, we could probably take out one or two or even seven of their bombs. But 10 years from now, they're going to have hundreds of them, which we won't be able to take out with bombs. And that, <laughs> I know it sounds, well, then what are we doing here? Exactly. It's exactly right. Now, Marie Harf, if Obama was talking about the situation with no deal, and he clearly was not doing that, he let the cat out of the bag and they were in panic at the State Department. Because on one hand, you've got John Kerry over there out there actually campaigning for the Nobel Peace Prize. And despite the fact that nobody believes it, the regime position is that they have put Iran on hold. That Obama is the first guy to come along to tackle this. And because of the power of Obama's personality, his charisma, his speeches, whatever, the Iranians have agreed to suspend the development of their weapons program. That's what the State Department position is. And they're out there telling all these lies or prevarications, falsehoods about the deal. Then Obama goes out there in an interview with NPR, lets a cat out of the bag. First about 10 years, then 13 years, and then this one-year period that they're supposed to stay away. If, 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 if Obama was talking about this in a hypothetical, which he wasn't, clearly, but if he was, let's just play the game, if he was talking about this in the hypothetical that uh, there's no deal, well, then all he had to say was that Iran could get a bomb within two months. Because that's what everybody says. I mean, the intelligence people and everybody that's been studying this, any length of time, says they're that close, just a couple of months away. The question is, does Iran want just one or two bombs now, which could be taken out by Israel or by us, or do they want protection from Israel for 10 years while they build up a large enough stockpile that could never completely be taken out? That's the game here. 
it's not a game. But that's 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 the Iranian agenda. And that's why they eagerly agree to this supposed 10-year moratorium with the promise that they will stay a year away from fully weaponizing all of their uranium. During those 10 years, they continue to build up an entire nuclear program, which after 10, 13 years would permit them to essentially weaponize a bunch of bombs. And during the 10 years, nobody's going to touch them because they've agreed not to do anything for 10 years or 13. So there's no attack on them. And the sanctions have been listed, lifted. So Iran tells everybody they're going to agree to this deal, whatever it is. Sanctions are lifted. Nobody can touch them for 10 years because they're theoretically not doing anything for 10 years. But then we get to years 12, 13, and all of a sudden, Obama lets the cat out of the bag that at that point, they could weaponize and we wouldn't even know it. So the danger is that 10 years from now, even sooner, the Iranians could have hundreds of bombs, which nobody would be able to take out. That is what I believe. This is, this is an estimate. But I think it's pretty close. I think what happened here is that Obama lets that cat out of the bag and Marie Harf panics. This administration is not about openness and transparency, despite what they say. So they had to go into immediate spin mode or CYA. So she admitted she called somebody over at the White House. What, 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 what the heck is he doing? So they had to say he went out and got his words mixed up. I, can you imagine... Can you imagine uh, Madam Albright, when she was Secretary of State, during the Kosovo War, conducting a press conference, answering a question from the AP about something that uh, Slick Willie's out there doing. Well, you know, he spoke uh, out of turn. He really didn't. He, words were kind of mixed up and muddled there. And, and I have to kind of straighten this out for you. Can you imagine, or if George Schultz, had done something similar to Rinaldus Magnus or Jim Baker, whoever. I mean, this is <laughs> fascinating to me. Because Obama lets the cat out of the bag. Marie Harf panics because the truth is not what they're about. And they have to try to convince everybody. No, no, no. What, you, you didn't hear what he said. And even if you did, he didn't mean it because he was talking about a, a hypothetical. Now, from the Times of Israel uh, today... Israel rejects U.S. attempt to reinterpret Obama's warning of the deal's flaws. Now, there are people, I may be in a minority here, there are people who believe that Marie Harf made a fool of herself yesterday again. So I'm cutting her some slack. I'm thinking she's trying to save the cause even if she appeared to be dumping on Obama. But there are a lot of people that think that's wrong. That, no, they think that she just made a fool of herself, that she's too big for her britches, that she's not nearly as important as she exists in her own mind, and that, and that she takes it upon herself to know more than Obama does, and to speak more openly about it than Obama did. That, that's what the popular perception of Marie Harf is among some people that she's just so full of herself that she thinks Obama doesn't know what he's talking about, but she does. And so she's going to take it on herself to go out and tell the world that the president essentially didn't know what he was talking about, but I'm here to tell you what the truth is. And in that sense, in that view, you'd say she made a fool of herself when she claimed Obama was mixed up in his comments about the breakout time. But he wasn't, is the bottom line. But I, another interesting thing about this, in his remarks to NPR, Obama admitted exactly what Benjamin Netanyahu has been saying. Quote, the official noted furthermore that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had highlighted precisely the problem Obama cited when he addressed both houses of Congress last month. And quote, that is Obama has admitted that when the deal expires, Iran will have the bomb. In fact, a lot of them, and this is not open to interpretation. This has been stated. This was, some of this is a little curious to me only because I'm asked, what's the big deal? He's already admitted this. 
was it last week or the week before? I remember being incredulous that he made this admission, coming to the Golden EIB microphone and talking about it. In the original version of this, Obama said, yeah, they're going to hold off for 10 years, and 10 years they're going to get it, but in that time we're going to be using the powers of our persuasion to convince them they should never use the bomb. But it's not up to us to deny them. But We don't have that right. We don't have that authority. Who are we to tell them they can't have them? Now, he didn't say that, but that's what he believes. It is abundantly clear.